It's good. There it is. Thank you. All right. James 1.17. Let's look at it. It says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variables or shadow of turning. So, Father, we thank You today for the Word of God. And we thank You that, Lord, every gift, every perfect gift, comes from You. And so, for the next few moments, Lord, would You take this Word? Would You allow this Word, Lord, to come deep within our hearts and help us, Lord, to once again receive the Word of God? And we thank You, Lord, for every good and perfect gift. And we thank you, Lord, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I have a new career besides radio and pastoring. I've been, uh, I'm now a videographer. You say, what is a videographer? Well, yesterday I was involved with uh, uh, webcasting a service from the St. Albert United Church. And uh, so that was interesting, and uh, I'm supposed to now be going down at uh, the big basilica downtown, the big St. Joe's Basilica, for a webcast as well. So I'm learning all kinds of different things when it comes to things. But I've discovered something, that in everything we are to give thanks, right? We are in Thanksgiving right now, and uh, would you bring up the next slide, my brother? And the, we're going to talk about how that every good, uh, perfect gift comes from the Lord. Now, as I started here, it says... Paul Apostle Paul reminds us in all things to give thanks, and there are a number of things that we should be thankful for. And we're going to go through that little uh, list this morning and kind of look at some of the things that we should be thankful. The first thing we should be thankful for is the begin to the ability to begin again. You know what? I just celebrated, believe it or not, my 43rd anniversary as a Christian yesterday morning. Okay? It was on Thanksgiving in 1974 that I gave my life. Now, sister, I got a long ways to go to catch up to you. Okay? I mean, I'm going to have to be 98 years old before I even get to 80. Okay? And if I get up to 81, then I'm going to have to be 99, you know, just to get there. I don't know if I'm going to be around that long. Okay? I'm, I'm hoping I'm not because I'd rather have Jesus come. Amen? Who wants to wait another 40 years? I don't. You know, I, I don't want to be, I want to be there long before that happens. And I don't want to go through the portal of death. I want to go through the portal of rapture. I want to experience that transformation. And, but, you know, God is a God of second chances. Through His mercy and grace, He gives all an opportunity to start again. Now, you know, I, I base that on 1 John 1 First John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and He's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I want to tell you something. I really believe in the God of the second chance. The reason I believe that is because I think He's probably given me a hundred thousand second opportunities. I believe in that. And maybe you felt that way too. Maybe this morning you got up and you said, Lord, thank you for the second chance. Thank you for another opportunity. You know, when you get up in the morning, it wouldn't be a bad idea to say, Lord, thank you for the second chance. Because the truth of the matter is, when you're on this side of the dirt, it's pretty good. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm not telling you that the other side isn't going to be wonderful, because it's going to be. But you know what? When you're on the other side, you don't have any more opportunities to touch your family. You don't have any more opportunities to uh, minister God's grace into someone else's life situation. It's all over. When you're done, you're done. Your influence on this earth is over. And when I had that little uh, heart episode a couple of weeks ago, that was what I was thinking about. When I was laying in the hospital for those seven hours, I began to think, Lord, I may never have another opportunity to tell people about Jesus Christ. That's why after that episode, the following morning, I went back on the radio, grateful for the opportunity. Now, it was interesting that the following day, in fact, that morning, <laughs> I cannot believe it happened, that morning I started losing my voice. 
And in fact, for three days, I could barely talk. But I went on the radio every single morning with my throat literally inflamed, only talking for a couple of moments. But the reason I did that was because of the fact that I wanted people to know about Jesus Christ. You see, every single morning, I give an opportunity. And in the last, and I'm not giving myself any praise in it. In the last six years, I have given over 1,800 invitations. 1,800 invitations to Christ in those that time period. Now you think about that. There's a lot of preachers who will never be able to... I get to do it every single day, Monday through Friday. Isn't that exciting? Now I never know who's going to answer. I never know if anyone's going to... I never care about that. All I care about is give the invitation. And so when I laid there, I said, Lord, if you give me another chance, I am going to make sure that I do not blow it this time. And so we've been working very hard towards that to make sure that we have that opportunity because once you're done, you're done. You're never going to be able to speak again in such a manner. You know, when I was uh, looking at that, when we were webcasting yesterday, um, I was reminded about the young individual that was in the casket. And I was reminded about the fact that he will never be able to speak into anybody's life. Now, that doesn't mean his life cannot speak. Because there are people whose testimony lives on in the lives of others. Amen? Amen. That does happen. There are individuals, even on our radio station, that though they've been gone for a period of time, they're still speaking. So we can speak... But we can't speak with our literal presence. That's what I'm talking about. So when you have an opportunity, take that opportunity. When you have an opportunity to tell somebody that you love them, especially members of your family, make sure that you do it. Amen? When you have an opportunity to give someone a smile, give someone a smile. If you have an opportunity to give someone a hug, give them a hug. If you give a chance to give a high five, give them a high five. Right? Whatever expression and encouragement that you have, when you have the opportunity, don't waste it. Because you never know. It may You may never get another opportunity. So that's important. So he's the God of the second chance. Let's get the next one on there, my brother. He says this, harmony and peace in the home. You know, a functional home is filled with God's presence and good communication is a gift. Don't take it for granted, all right? If you have a good communicative relationship with the members of your family, be thankful. Also as well, remember the promise of Acts 16.31 that says not only shall you be saved, but your household as well. If you have members of your family who are serving the Lord, if you are a couple that are serving the Lord, then you should be grateful that you have a foundation in your home. You should be bowing your head at the Thanksgiving meal, whether it's today or tomorrow, and just say, Lord, thank you today for the wonderful relationship that I have right now. Because there's a lot of homes out there. In fact, about 60% of all homes in the nation of Canada are right now like a war zone. Did you know that? 60% of all homes in Canada, there is marital strife, there is family disunity. And so if you have that happening in your home where God has blessed you with good communication, where God has blessed you with a, a functional home, if you have family members who are serving the Lord, that is really something to be thankful for. When we gather tomorrow at my daughter's place, everyone that is in that home is serving the Lord. There'll be about 18 to 20 people at that meeting, at that dinner. And every one of them will be serving the Lord. Now, I will bow my head tomorrow thanking the Lord for the fact that I have four children serving the Lord, that I have six grandchildren who are serving the Lord, that I have family members here this morning that are in Sunday school and involved in this ministry. I'm thankful for that. And you should be thankful if you have something like that happening in your situation. If it isn't happening, then pray that in the next year that God will give that to you. Amen? Pray for that. Pray that God will save your family. 
If there's difficulty in your home, pray that God will give you good communication, all right? You want to see the joy of heaven and earth found in your home, amen? That's the will of God. The Bible says that we that uh, we will have a joyful and abundant life, even as our soul prospers. You want to have abundant life? You know where it starts? It starts with you. The Bible says this, and this was the prayer of John in 3 John. And when I was doing my uh, uh, video presentations uh, for the next uh, daily Bible class, which I did this week, I got to do 3 John too. So I got to spend some time talking to the video audience, and it'll be coming up in about another week or so, or two weeks on uh, our webcasts that we have every single day, the daily Bible class. But I, I, I love the fact that it says that prosperity and health begin in the way he says, I pray this. He says, I pray that you be in prosperity and health even as your soul prospers. It starts from the inside out, folks. If you have internal conflict and warfare happening right now in your life, you have not gained the fact that it starts from the inside out. And just take a moment. Let's just take a moment right now. And let's just close our eyes for just a moment. And let's ask the Lord right now, in this moment, to give us that peace that passes all understanding. Lord, right now, in this moment, we're going to ask that, Lord, this would be the moment that absence of conflict and absence of internal warfare would not happen in our lives anymore. That, Lord, today, your peace would pass all understanding. That, Lord, right now, health and prosperity are going to come into our lives and situations, even as our soul prospers. Lord, today, we ask that if this is the moment that you're going to set us free from all the internal conflict, and you're going to give us that peace that passes all understanding, and you're going to give us victory in the name of Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, so that's what you want. Now, here's another one. A dedicated spouse, lifelong companionship with someone loyal who truly understands you is something that money cannot buy. Now, if you have, if you don't have a spouse, let's say you're, you're, uh, for example, you know, single, then you should be grateful for the friends that you have. Amen. If you have found a lifelong companion or a lifelong friend, that is such a blessing. Amen. It really is. Uh, uh, if you have someone in your life right now that you can speak to, that you can bring whatever it is that you need to bring to them, and they give you a non-judgmental type of uh, relationship, because that's what true companionship is, they will take you with all your warts. Last night, I took my wife out for her birthday, you know, and uh, as we were sitting there, and she was she was sitting there looking so lovely, I thought to myself, how in heaven's name did I get such a beautiful lady? Now, my wife is not just beautiful on the outside, she's also beautiful on the inside. And it was interesting that one of our old friends from one of our other churches, she wrote on my wife's Facebook page, Oh, ooh la la, you look so good in red hair. Now, we didn't want to tell her that, you know, it's a wig, but we'll just leave that alone. But the point is that she, she said this. This lady said that my wife was beautiful inside and out, and I cannot disagree. And the reason I can't disagree is because my wife is probably the nicest person I know. And the reason I say that is because she put up with me for all these years. And I sat there and I said, I cannot believe that this lovely lady would actually want to hang out with me and be married to me. I mean, it was a, an amazing situation when I asked her to marry and she actually said yes. Oh, oh that was really incredible. Actually, how it worked was this. I, I, I said, would you marry me? And she said, I don't believe you. That's exactly what she said. I don't believe you. I said, what are you talking about? I, 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 she says... It, how it turned out, we, 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 were, we were sitting on the couch, and I wanted to give her a kiss. And she put her arm bar across my throat and said, you're not getting another kiss until you say you're going to marry me. That's actually how it happened. That's my version. And I said, okay, will you marry me? She says, I don't believe you. So I said, well, what do you want me to do? She said, you come back tomorrow morning and call my dad 
at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, and I will believe you. Folks, I was there at 5 to 7. I had my suit on. She says, you have a suit on. I said, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it upright. So I phoned up her dad at 7 o'clock, and he says, hello. I said, Mr. Wood. Yeah. This is your future son-in-law, Robert Dean Steele. What? <laughs> Do you know what time in the morning it is? Yes, sir. I know what time in the morning it is. But your daughter has insisted that I call you. He says, is my daughter on something? I said, no. She wants me. I I'm asking for the hand of your daughter. He says, don't you want the rest of it? I said, yes, sir, I do. He says, at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'll give you anything. Yes, you can have my daughter. Well, thank you, sir. And she got on the phone, thank you, Dad. And he says, all right, let me go back to bed. <laughs> That's basically how it happened. Folks, I was just grateful for the opportunity that he actually said yes. And he, I think more than anything else, he just wanted to get rid of her. Anyway, let's continue on. <laughs> Lifelong companionship. I thank the Lord for my wife, Lois. Now let's go to the next one. All right, so the next one. Your calling and your ministry. You say, I have a calling? Absolutely. Every one of us have a calling. Now, a calling can be both a vocational, but it also as well a direction of life. Okay. You need to bloom wherever you are planted and where whatever you are doing. If you are a homeworker, then bloom in that position. If you work in a job, bloom in that position. And as well, be grateful for all the people that you have an opportunity to speak into. If you have a workplace, be thankful for that. If you have a home, be thankful for that. If you're retired, be thankful for that. Whatever it is, be thankful. He says, because God's got a plan for your life that's bigger than you ever thought. One of, my, one of the most fantastic things that we've been learning from, especially John Bavaria, and I love this part. When Gideon was called to do and to take out the Midianites, you know what God called him even before he had done a thing? He called him a mighty man of valor. Now, Gideon had not done one single thing. He had not taken the Midianites out. He had not, you know, did what he did. He was just Gideon. But God called him a mighty man of valor. And I also thought this was interesting. When Jesus went into the waters of baptism, and the dove lighted on his shoulder, the Father in heaven said something. And he said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus had not done one single thing ministry-wise. He had not done one single thing. Later on in the Mount of Transfiguration, he would again say it, and then he would say it at the end of his ministry. But what he was saying was, even before you have done a single thing, I am well pleased with you. Isn't that great to know? That God is well pleased with you? That He looks at you through rose-colored glasses? I love that. I love the fact that God sees us not as we are, but what we shall become. Interesting. When you look at the Apostle Paul, and he had his road of Damascus experience, you know what the Lord said, Jesus said to him? He says, I have called you to be a light and to minister to the Gentiles. Now, Paul had not even gone to the Gentiles, had he? But that was his mission, that was his calling. We need to understand that even before we start off in ministry, God has already got a great plan in store for us. Amen? And whether it's, you know, what it might be a, a small ministry, you would consider a small ministry, ministering to a family. Let me tell you about one of the most powerful women of the... 16th, uh, I'm sorry, the 18th century. This woman had 18 children. Two of those children ended up being incredible men of God. Her name was Susanna Wesley. She was the wife of Sam, Samuel Wesley. And her two sons, John Wesley, who was probably the most powerful preacher in all of English history, and her other son was Charles Wesley, probably the greatest hymn writer of all English history. 
You know what she did? Every single week, those 18, you imagine taking 18 hours. She took one hour of personal Bible study with each child every single week. Now, I wish that we had a family of 18 walking in here this morning. Amen? Now, that would be something. But she took one hour every single week with her children. And she had two of those children who ended up being what we would call world changers. Now, when she was, when she was doing this work with her children every single week, she had no idea what, she, what was going to happen with the future of those children. She believed that God was going to use them. But she was faithful in bringing that message of Jesus Christ to her children. And because of that, her children changed the world. And her, and her boys acknowledged that the reason why they were serving the Lord was because their mom took that time to be with them every single week. So whether it is teaching your children daily about the Lord or doing something else, you know what? We need to be aware and be faithful to it. Amen? That's what we're called to do. So, God's got a greater plan for us. Now, here's another one. Lasting friendship. You know, some people are fair-weather friends. They come around when things are good. Give thanks if God has given you true friends that stand the test of time. Amen? If God has given you a friend that stands the test of time, you can call them up and it's like talking to them when you were last time together. We have friends like that. I have a fr I have several friends like that. All I have to do is call them up. And it's like we talk like we haven't missed a beat. If you have friends like that, if you have family like that, you should be grateful. There's lots of people that come into our lives. Amen? There are lots of people who are there for, a, for whatever reason. But if you have a true friend, and let me tell you this, you do have a true friend. The Bible says there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen? The promise that you and I have, you may be alone in life at times, but you're never, ever alone. The Lord has made the promise that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Isn't that a great promise from the Word of God? You always have a true friend who sticks closer than a brother. But if you have a friend who is uh, what I would call a physical friend, someone that you can call up, someone that you can be involved in, then you should be grateful for that. Amen? Let's go to the next one, my brother. He says, how about this? Uh, prize possessions. Now, you, you, we're, we're not talking about golf clubs and books or watches and things like that. You know, God given you that, but uh, be thankful. But you know what? There are some gifts that God has also given you that I want to talk about for just a moment. It's called the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to give you gifts today. He wants to give you, for example, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. He wants to give you a vocabulary. One of the most fantastic things that ever happened to me when I first came to know the Lord, it happened in a young people's camp in, uh, in uh, where was it? Okay, Sundry, Alberta. And one of my friends came up to me and says, look what the Lord gave me this weekend. He began to speak in tongues. I said, I can do that. He said, you cannot. I said, I can so. And I began to speak in tongues with him right in front of him. He says, when did God give you that? I said, God gave it to me last night. I just thought it was uh, something that was, you know, but he gave it to me. That was a wonderful gift that gave me. God also gave me the ability to be able to speak. In, in prophecy and also as well tongues and interpretation prophecy. But if God gives you discernment, discernment is a great gift, and it's a fact, a gift that you need to have, amen? Because you need to know what's going on. It gives you the ability to see what's happening before it happens. If God gives you knowledge, or if God gives you, for example, the ability to see in the Spirit, that's a great thing. If God gives you faith and healing and miracles, wouldn't you like to have faith to see healings and miracles? You know, that can happen. Those are gifts that God can give you. If God has given you anything, be grateful. Amen? Amen? If God... Here's a gift that you should always be grateful. Your Bible. Do you have a Bible? If you don't have a Bible, wave up your phone. Because many of you have a phone. Put it on your phone. All right? My phone. This is my Bible. I, it's my phone. Okay? I read it every single day. Okay? Plus, I have a hard copy as well that I read as well. But the point that I'm saying is, God has given us His Bible. Amen? 
That's something to be thinking. How about salvation? That's the biggest gift that He ever gave us. If you're saved this morning, be thankful. Just say, Lord, thank you for my salvation right now. Just take a moment. Say, Lord, thank you for my salvation right now. Thank Him for that wonderful salvation. Thank Him as well that He has also given you a church. If you're involved with a church, be thankful for your church. Amen? Be thankful for your pastor. Be thankful for me. Okay? Maybe you're saying, I don't know if I want to be thankful for you. Well, you know what? Be thankful just for the moment. All right? Be thankful for me. All right? Just for the moment. Okay? God has given us so many wonderful gifts. God has given you, here's a gift to be thankful for, your breath. How about just breathing in for a moment? Take a deep breath and exhale. Do it again. I'm not trying to make you, you know, that's what the doctor was doing to me the other, a couple of weeks ago. He says, take a breath. So I took the breath, exhale. I said, is everything okay? He says, you're breathing. I said, that's a good start. You know? If God has given you a mind that is able to process, He's given the ability to speak. You know, folks, there's a lot of people who can't speak. There's a lot of people who aren't in their right mind right now. Be thankful that you're here in your right mind. Amen? Those are things to be. Having a relationship with God is also the most single important component of life. Paul says training for godliness pays dividends not only in this life, but also in the next. Thank Him daily for His undying love and His desire for a covenant relationship with you. If you know Jesus Christ, that is in itself a great blessing. You see, when I went to Havard, Montana, back in 1974, I had no idea that my Thanksgiving was going to change. I had no idea. I went there to find a girlfriend because my friends told me that I would find a girl. And I never did find a girl that weekend. But I did find the Lord. And I'm grateful for that. So every Thanksgiving, on the Saturday morning, just like I did yesterday morning, I got alone with God. And I just said, Lord, thank you. I am so grateful for the wonderful salvation that you gave me. You see, I wasn't looking for that salvation. I wasn't desperately desiring that salvation. You know, the thing that absolutely amazes me is that God was looking for you and God was looking for me. The Bible says, well, we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. I can honestly say I was not looking for God. He wasn't even in the picture. But when the call went out, I saw a good deal. Folks, have you come across a good deal lately? Have you found just that thing and then all of a sudden the sales clerk or the salesman says, I'm going to give you 50% off. Has that happened lately? I tell you, when that happens, you're, there's a big smile on your face. It's a great, great deal. I remember not that long ago, I came across something that I, I needed and I wanted. And I went to the sales place. I, I expected a certain price. And the person said to me, oh, today only we're giving 30% off. I said, wow. And by the way, it's also 15% off day. I thought, wonderful. Folks, I got off my item for 45% off. Well, I walked out of there. I had more money in my pocket. I got the item. And you should have seen the smile on my face. I walked home. I said, honey, look what I got. I got it for 45% off. She went, wow, that's wonderful. Aren't you glad for wives who are happy about situations like that? <laughs> you spent money and you're happy about it. Hallelujah. It's because I got the item 45% off. That's why people love Black Friday, right? That's why people love Boxing Day. I have seen people, and you have too, they're out there sitting outside the store hours before it happens. And then they go in and they spend money that they don't have. But they come out happy because they got the deal. Amen? I mean, 
mean, when you get 70 or 80% off, even if you haven't got the money, you're glad about it because you got a deal. <laughs> right? This is the best bargain and deal because the marvelous thing is you don't have to pay anything. Right? It is free. All you have to do is accept it. Can I close with one little story? This weekend, or this last week, a young couple, in fact, it was last Saturday, a young couple went to the uh, store to check their lotto numbers. Now, folks, I'm not saying that you should go and buy a lottery ticket. I'm not saying that. But what happened to them was incredible. The young woman went in and they said, you, they went, woo-woo, as they do. And she says, well, how much did we win? And she says, 60. And she said, oh, $60,000? No, more. They won $60 million. A young couple just outside of Edmonton. Now, I want to tell you something. They played the audio for that. And those people were happy. They were incredibly happy. I don't know about you, but if someone gave me $60 million, I wouldn't turn it down. Amen? But I want to tell you something. As happy as they were, that $60 million is nothing in comparison to what you and I have received. The gift that they have well, basically, it will be okay for this life. And it might make their life a lot better. But you know what? They can't take it with them. And it has no value in the life to come. The Bible says that um, the things of this world, basically, they will corrupt. A, a thief can come in and steal it. You and I have been given the greatest gift of all. The gift of eternal life. It's more priceless than, or precious and more wonderful than anything that this world can give. And you and I have it. And that's, we should be grateful for that. Amen? Father, we thank you today for the Word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to serve you and to be grateful for this day.